saints, peace, love, and grace of Christ Jesus be with all of you. I hope everybody's doing fantastic out there today. We begin our study on the book of Galatians, one of Paul's very first books, if not the first book that Paul wrote after visiting the region of Galatia. A little bit about the region of Galatia. Galatia is not a city. It's not a town. It's not a valley. Galatia is what we call a country. In fact, the region of Galatia is where Turkey is today. It's a big area. And when we say that Paul visited Galatia, we mean that Paul visited several cities inside of Galatia, establishing many little bodies of believers. And some of these cities, uh, cities considered inside of Galatia would be uh, Lystra and Derb and Iconium and the second Antioch, just north of Pisidia and Pamphylia. So there were several different cities that Paul visited inside of the region of Galatia. And when Paul writes the book of Galatians, he's writing to all these different little cities within that region of the globe. And in our study in the book of Acts, I mentioned several times that the book of Acts is an overview of Paul's entire ministry over 30 plus years of Paul's journeys and activities. From 34 AD at Paul's conversion, shortly after the stoning of Stephen in Acts chapter 7, all the way to Paul's very last years until martyrdom in 66 AD. Now just four years prior to the destruction of the Jewish temple in 70 AD, so we saw Paul's early years in our study on the book of Acts, and Paul helps to kill the prophet Stephen, the Holy Spirit through uh, speaking through Stephen in Acts chapter 7. Then we see Paul in Acts chapter 9 on the road to Damascus. Paul's traveling to Damascus to hunt down Jews who believe in Jesus Christ. And this group of believing Jews is known as the little flock. Jews converted under the ministry of our Lord Jesus and then Peter and the other Jewish apostles. Now on the way to Damascus, we see in Acts chapter 9, our Lord Jesus confronts Paul. Our Lord's brightness blinds Paul in choosing Paul for a very important mission. So Paul is led by the hand. He's blind to Damascus because he can't see anything. And in Damascus, a kingdom saint named Ananias is sent to Paul to heal Paul's vision, to reveal to Paul what Jesus has planned was for him that Paul would be sent to the heathen, the Gentiles. Paul then leaves Damascus and he heads down to Arabia. Now, why Arabia? Also, it's important to note that Arabia was void of believers. There were no believers in Jesus Christ in Arabia, so whatever Paul did down in Arabia was directly between him and our Lord Jesus. I'm convinced that Jesus revealed to Paul much of the mystery concerning the body of Christ and the rapture and so on while Paul was in Arabia. Now after leaving Arabia, Paul heads back to Damascus. Then he heads to Jerusalem to find the little flock, Jesus' Jewish believers, the sheep of the house of Israel. In Jerusalem, Paul finds Peter and James, Jesus' brother. He stays with Peter for 15 days. Then he heads north through Syria, Cilicia, Antioch, and then finally he ends up in Tarsus. Tarsus is where Paul was born. It's a Roman city filled with Gentiles. And Paul would remain in Tarsus for over 10 years, undoubtedly teaching them all about this new mystery revealed to him back in Damascus and in Arabia, building a body of believers we now know as the body of Christ. At the end of those 10 years in Tarsus, we see Barnabas come to find Paul and they head down to Antioch. Then they're given the task of bringing supplies to Jerusalem. From Jerusalem, Paul heads back north, back to Antioch, and it's here in Antioch where Paul's journeys would begin. Somewhere around 47 to 48 AD, about 14 years after his conversion on the road to Damascus. In Acts chapter 13, all the way through Acts 16, Luke records Paul's first journeys across to Cyprus, north to Pamphylia, then into the Galatian region. And if you remember, Paul wasn't well received in those areas. The Galatians even tried to kill Paul, even supposing that Paul had been dead by stoning. 
but he didn't die God still had much more for Paul much more for him to do shortly after Paul's journeys uh, through the Galatian region Paul went back to Jerusalem for what we know as the Jerusalem Council somewhere around 49 AD and the Jerusalem Council meeting was all about Jews versus Gentile believers the Jews wanted the Gentile converts to follow their Jews mosaic system of laws like circumcision and keeping the Sabbath and all those but Paul knew that the body of Christ wasn't commanded to keep such laws and traditions so they had to settle this matter because it was causing fights between the Jews and the Gentile believers they settled the matter by drafting up an agreement that the Gentile believers would not have to be circumcised or follow their Jewish traditions but would have to abstain from fornication and from blood of strangled animals and so on now keep in mind they didn't have the US post office back then or UPS or FedEx or the internet and so on this Jerusalem Council agreement that they drafted up would take many years to circulate around that part of the world so until this understanding of the agreement was circulated all over there were still many Jews who hadn't heard about the agreement still trying to force Gentiles under the Jewish laws and traditions and one place in particular was the region of Galatia the body of Christ in Galatia were being bombarded by the Jewish uh, mosaic system of laws and traditions and the Jews were subjecting the body of Christ to follow certain laws and bondages and of course over time Paul would hear about this controversy and it's for this reason that Paul writes a letter to the Galatians concerning this problem between the law versus grace Paul had taught the Galatians all about this new revelation he'd received from Jesus Christ something hidden in God since the foundation of the world a mystery a secret mystery that God would build a body of believers made up of both Jews and Gentiles what we know as the body of Christ believers added to this body by faith alone without the law without works without circumcision without keeping certain days holy and so on so the period of time that we're dealing with here is approximately between 47 to 50 AD Paul first his first journeys went through the Galatian region just before Paul and Timothy head west across Asia then to Trous and over to Macedonia and Thessalonica and so on the letter that Paul writes to the Galatians is not exactly a nice letter this letter would be considered the same as the letter Paul wrote to the Corinthians scolding them about growing up and being uh, you know being mature more mature uh, the need for them to grow up spiritually in Christ Jesus the book of Galatians is a letter of counseling and most certainly not a letter of commendation and those of you who've served in the military like I have know exactly what I mean by a letter of counseling versus a letter of commendation something interesting to notice as we start our study on Galatians is that Paul is writing this letter himself he doesn't mention Barnabas he, he simply says the brothers that are with me and also in order to understand the details of what Jesus revealed to Paul in Arabia uh, forward we need to look at what Paul writes in the book of Ephesians he explains the details of this mystery in Ephesians 3 for this cause I Paul the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you were how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the 
fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. It's this gospel that Paul revealed to the Galatians early on, saving many of them, but also causing much conflict between the kingdom saints, the little flock, other Jews and Gentiles in that region. Remember, this little flock of Jews was what Jesus built while he was on earth. After Jesus ascends to heaven, this little flock remains. They didn't go to heaven with him. They're still here. So Jesus gives the job of shepherd to Peter and the other 11 apostles to feed the sheep, to look after this little flock of Jewish believers. Okay, keep in mind, these are all Jews. There's no Gentiles in this little flock. This little flock were, were supposed to be the kingdom saints and the kingdom program. And they're very much still around during Paul's ministry. It's a transition going on, but because the Jews rejected their third chance, blaspheming and rejecting the Holy Spirit, speaking through the prophet Stephen, killing Stephen by stoning him, this little flock program is over. It's been paused. Hence the creation of a new program or dispensation through the apostle Paul. Keep in mind, Paul was not part of the 12 apostles. Paul was a new type of apostle in a new program which we know as the dispensation of the grace of God the body of Christ made up of both Jews and Gentiles until Daniel's 70th week on a side note before we begin chapter 1 of Galatians if you're new to this ministry and you haven't taken part in the book of Acts study which I just finished we went chapter by chapter verse by verse all 28 chapters in the book of Acts if you haven't watched that study, I highly suggest you do before getting into any further studies such as this one on Galatians. The book of Acts is the foundation to who we are as the body of Christ. The conversion from Peter to Paul, from the kingdom program to the grace program, or from the dispensation of the kingdom over to the dispensation of grace. Another reason why is because during this study on Galatians, I'll be referring back to the things we covered in the book of Acts. And the only way you'll know what I'm referring to is if you've already went through that study on the book of Acts. And if you haven't done so, then you might be left scratching your head. And the last thing I want to do is confuse you or leave things unanswered for you. So please take the time to complete the study on the book of Acts before you follow us into further studies. I'm just trying to help you. Okay, so let's begin. The year, again, is right around 48 to 49 AD, at least 14, 15 years after Paul's conversion on the road to Damascus after Arabia. Galatians chapter 1, of course, in the King James Version Bible, always, verse 1, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by men, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead and all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Okay, in verse 6, Paul mentions two gospels. First gospel is of the dispensation of grace, Paul's gospel, the mystery revealed to Paul by our Lord Jesus Christ. Then Paul says unto another gospel, I mentioned something earlier about this battle between, uh, you know, throughout this 30-year ministry. Remember I said Paul's battle wasn't with the Gentiles, but his battle was with the law-minded Jews, even the kingdom saints, believers in Jesus, but also followers of the Mosaic law. This other gospel Paul is speaking of here was one that believed in Jesus, but also continued on in works and traditions of the mosaic system the kingdom program 
We know Paul traveled all throughout Galatia, preaching the gospel of grace, building the body of Christ, but the Jews were convincing some of the body of Christ back under the law, back under bondage, the works-based religion. Also keep in mind that the Jerusalem Council had just taken place, an agreement between the kingdom program and the grace program between the Jews and Gentiles. Their agreement was that the Gentiles would not have to follow the zealous Jews kingdom program, the mosaic system of laws, you know, no circumcision and so on. But these Jewish Galatians were very law minded and many of our brothers and sisters in Christ were being led back under the kingdom program. We saw in our study on the book of Acts that Peter's kingdom gospel was declining and Paul's gospel was on the incline. But during this time, there was much confusion taking place. That's why the book of Acts is called a book of transition. It's a transitional book. It shows the transition from kingdom to grace, the transition from the Jews kingdom program over to Paul's grace mystery program, which we're now in until the rapture takes place. Then everything goes back to where God left off with the prophet Stephen. Okay, so in verse six, Paul says that they started out good in the gospel of grace, but then were being tricked into another gospel, the kingdom mosaic system, two different dispensations. And in verse seven, Paul says, which is not another because both groups believed in Jesus as the Messiah. They believed in Jesus, but the kingdom program is different from our program today. So Paul calls it a perversion of the dispensation of grace which is still taking place all over the world today. We see the religious system all over the world pushing a works-based system. Instead of believing solely on the gospel, we find in 1 Corinthians 15, one through four. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And notice that Paul mentions the very same problem here in 1 Corinthians as they were having in Galatia. Look at 1 Corinthians 15 verse 2, Paul says, unless ye have believed in vain. Paul is addressing those people here that did believe in Jesus, but they didn't believe in their resurrection. So they were believing in vain. So this too is considered another gospel, like we see Paul mention in our study today. Okay, moving on in verse eight, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Paul says, if any man or angel preach any other gospel other than Paul's gospel, which was given to him by our Lord Jesus, let them be accursed. Does that mean James is accursed when he writes in his book of James that salvation only comes by faith plus works? And Paul says faith without works. So is James accursed? What about John when he teaches a works based salvation? Is John cursed? What about the angels in the book of Revelation when they preach the everlasting gospel? instead of Paul's gospel. Are the angels cursed in the book of Revelation? Well, when you rightly divide God's word, you'll discover that the gospel in the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and also in Hebrews through Revelation, is a different gospel from what Paul preached. So does that mean every one is accursed? What Paul is saying in verse eight and nine is clear. If anyone preach any other gospel during the time of dispensation of grace, they are to be accursed. Paul's not talking about outside of the dispensation of grace. He's talking about after the rapture, Paul is addressing 
He's not talking about after the rapture. He, Paul is addressing people inside the dispensation we're in today. So when the rapture takes place, the body of Christ is removed, the dispensation of grace of God comes to a close. Then a different gospel will be preached. And we know it will be the kingdom gospel once again, a faith plus works based system. They'll have to endure till the end to be delivered. The angels in Revelation will be preaching a different gospel than Paul's because Paul's gospel no longer applies during that time. It's too late to be saved according to 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. The chance for salvation by faith alone is closed once the rapture happens. Then we see the kingdom program start up once again with the commencement of Daniel's 70th week. God is once again going to focus on Israel's covenants and promises. After the rapture, God will once again gather the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In verse 10, For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of men, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's obvious when you compare Romans through Philemon, Paul's books, with the rest of the New Testament, you see two distinctly different Gospels. Paul's Gospel, the mystery revealed to him, was given to Paul directly by our Lord Jesus. This Gospel that was given, was given to Paul by Jesus was hid from the world until just the right time. When Israel would reject God three times, then God would reveal the secret hid in God since before the foundation of the world. Go back and read Ephesians chapter 3 again. Okay, so it's in Damascus and Arabia that Paul would learn the specifics of this mystery, this gospel of grace of God, the building of a body of believers made of both Jews and Gentiles. So Paul didn't learn about this mystery from Peter or from Gamaliel or from the other 11 apostles or from any other books that were laying around. Paul learned of this dispensation of grace directly by revelation from our Lord Jesus. And we continue to receive revelations all throughout his 30 plus year ministry. Verse 13, For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. If you recall from our study in the book of Acts, Paul was born in Tarsus, a Roman Gentile territory, giving Paul Roman citizenship. Then Paul, being Jewish, wanting to study the religion of his forefathers, moved down to Jerusalem to study under Gamaliel, a Pharisee, a doctor of the Mosaic laws. And Paul was one of Gamaliel's top students. Paul was very intelligent and he had extensive knowledge of the Mosaic system. Paul was a zealous Pharisee, a religion of works and laws. Verse 15, But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen, the Gentiles. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which are were apostles before me, but I went to into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. In verse 15, Paul says he was separated from his mother's womb. We'll see later on in our study in Galatians who Paul is speaking about when he uses the word mother. He's not talking about his physical mother here, but he's talking about his spiritual mother who is Jerusalem. Look at Galatians 4 real quick, verse 26. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. So Paul is saying God removed him from the Mosaic system of Israel, Jerusalem and placed Paul into a new program. Paul is the firstborn of the body of Christ. Also, 
Something else to take note of here is that Jerusalem, being a mother of Israel, is the woman we see in Revelation 12 and other places. Jerusalem is the spiritual bride, the spiritual wife, the same wife that cheated on God with other gods, rejecting God the first time, and God gives her a bill of divorcement and will reconcile with her at the second coming. If you're not familiar with who the bride is, take a look at another study, another video I made uh, on my channel. It's called Shocking Discovery, The Bride of Christ. I'm watching, in watching that video, you'll discover just who the bride is that God reconciles with at the end of Daniel's 70th week. Now in verse 18, Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him fifteen days. But other of the apostles saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother. Now, the things which I write unto you, behold, before God, I lie not. Afterwards, I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia. Paul leaves Jerusalem and heads north, eventually going back to his birthplace, Gentile Roman territory, the city of Tarsus, where Paul would stay for over 10 years, preaching the gospel of grace. Verse 22, And was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preaches the faith which once he destroyed. And they glorified God in me. Keeping in mind that when Paul left Damascus and came to Jerusalem, the kingdom program was in full bloom. It was in full swing. This wasn't too long after Jesus built the little flock. When he was killed, he rose again and ascended to heaven, leaving Peter in charge over this little flock, the kingdom saints. When Paul arrived in Jerusalem, his gospel wasn't well received, and surely Paul would have been killed by the Jews for what they thought, or at the time, that Paul's gospel was an apostasy. So Paul leaves for safety reasons and heads north to Tarsus, his birthplace, making Paul a Roman citizen. In Tarsus, Paul would continue to grow spiritually in Christ Jesus, would preach the gospel of grace, and would build the body of Christ, until he's called to travel with Barnabas later on, further down the road at 47 AD. Now in conclusion, as we continue our study of Galatians, Paul will disclose the distinct differences between the kingdom program and the grace program. One all about faith and works, the other one all about faith alone without works. The body of Christ in Galatia is under attack by the law-minded Jews, trying to force them back under the Mosaic system. And we're going to see Paul address this issue. And also keep in mind, the problem they were having in Galatia can be seen even today 2,000 years later. Understanding what took place in Paul's day is going to help us understand what's taking place even today in the religious system. So Galatians is a very important book to study. Just as long as you rightly divide according to 2 Timothy 2.15 and you apply discernment accordingly. If you participated in the study in the book of Acts, you should understand the difference between the kingdom program, the kingdom gospel, and the gospel of grace, Paul's mystery gospel. The difference between what Peter was preaching and what Paul was preaching. Two distinctly different Gospels for two different groups of people. If you understand that, then the book of Galatians will be a blessing to you. No doubt about it. Again, if you haven't taken part of the, book, uh, the study on Acts, I highly encourage you to do so now. Because you need to understand the book of Acts in order to understand any of Paul's letters or epistles, Romans through Philemon. Unto Christ Jesus be all the glory and praise forever and ever. Lord willing, I will see you on the next study, Galatians chapter 2.